Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today we are looking at a live working RCX 400. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com, and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. All right guys, so the Mead RCX 400, the advanced Ritchie design. Well, the best way that I could describe it is basically like a Mead LX200 uh, with several kind of really kind of key differences. Overall guys, I would say that this is probably the most advanced scope that Mead has ever made. And at this point, I know what you're thinking. You're like, wow, that's a big clam. What makes you say that? Well, so here's what's going on. So the fork arm, you know, like the mount itself of the scope is really similar to the LX200. So there's not really too much of a difference there. What really separates this scope from the LX200 200 line is that me try to address all of the issues that most SCTs suffer from, which is uh, normally SCTs they focus with their primary mirror moving back and forth, which for imaging can introduce mirror flop and even for visual that could be annoying. So basically when you're trying to focus the telescope, the mirror will kind of shift its position and you could kind of see uh, that, you know, either through the eyepiece or definitely long exposure astrophotography. So what this design actually does is it has the mirror permanently, uh, you know, set here uh, at the back. It doesn't move at all. Uh, there's actually no manual focuser at all on this telescope. Uh, there is an aftermarket external focuser installed on this. Normally this would not come with the telescope. The way that this guy actually focuses is that the secondary, or not secondary, the corrector play with the secondary uh, moves back back and forth and there's three rods in there that control motors that kind of synchronizingly move the whole corrector plate back and forth to focus. With the dust cover removed, as you can see, there is no typical uh, collimation screws that would be, uh, you know, kind of in the front here uh, that are present on pretty much any other SCT. And as you can see, let's get like kind of like a profile shot. This thing, the secondary is actually bonded to the prime or to the uh, corrector plate, which is kind of a cool effect. Uh, I do like the look of it. Uh, well, you might ask, how do you collimate the darn thing? Well, remember those three motors that I was telling you? You could actually kind of see the shafts uh, right here, uh, which kind of correspond to the humps on uh, this uh, um, plastic cover. So basically there's three rods uh, with three motors that are actually in the back there to where uh, you can adjust the collimation of the scope with the hand controller uh, by tilting the entire assembly, whichever way it needs to be, to get perfect collimation. Pretty cool. All right, and the other no noteworthy thing, as you might notice here when I kind of zoom in, is that the tube of the scope is made out of carbon fiber. So this, uh, you know, assembly is made out of carbon fiber. So that's really cool. So for those of you guys that, you know, do astrophotography, which is kind of like, you know, again, what me, you know, is trying to aim this scope for is for the advanced, you know, person that's doing astrophotography. Uh, carbon fiber doesn't expand and contract nearly as much, so it should give you a lot more constant focus with this tube design as well. All right, and then before we move on from the tube, I did want to point out a couple of other, you know, kind of neat things. Uh, the, these scopes do have a fan built in, uh, so that's pretty atypical for SCTs. Usually SCTs do not have a fan built in. Um, and also this guy has ports built in right on the OTA. So there's several USB ports. There's a hand controller port, which normally, I mean, you could plug in a hand or a wired hand controller in there as well. I'm not really sure why you'd want to plug it in there. Uh, mine actually has the wireless uh, auto start that Mead offers. So this is kind of a rare piece. Uh, honestly, this is the first time I've even seen one. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of touch on, you know, how that works in actual in real life. And, you know, there's a couple of other ports, like, you know, you can attach a reticle here, which is actually wired to my um, Telluride there. So that's pretty cool to have all that. And kind of moving on to the mount, you know, just in case you're not familiar with the LX200 line, uh, especially the newer GPS one. So this thing does have GPS built in and it works the exact same way. So it has like that whole auto leveling, auto north, north routine, which, you know, we'll kind of get to my thoughts on that. Um, so anyhow, let's see how this guy does with the alignment procedure 
and maybe a little bit of EA. Alrighty guys, and while it's kind of getting dark, I just wanted to show you the fully automated uh, alignment procedure that the scope has built in, kind of how it works. So let's check it out. So I'm turning the scope on now. Now, so the auto star is booting up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the stopwatch on my uh, clock here. Okay, so we're at zero seconds. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell the telescope to fully automatically do its alignment procedure. And we'll see how long that takes. Okay, so the scope is just freshly turned on. As soon as I press zero, it'll start to take the GPS, do the alignment, and then I'll start the uh, stopwatch. Okay, so it's starting now. So I'm, um, I started uh, the um, stopwatch there. Um, and I'll speed up this video not to bore you guys too long. But um, just, you know, kind of check out kind of like the procedure and how long this takes. Alright guys, so it slewed to the first star at about 6 minutes and 45 seconds. Alright guys, so I'm a fan of automation, you know, just like the next guy. But to me, this is like, you know, watching paint dry. I mean, to take 7 minutes uh, to do its, you know, kind of like... Uh, alignment or pre-alignment routine and guys all it's really accomplishing is it's finding out where north is which you could simply do by just simply pointing the tube even roughly north it doesn't have to be pointed exactly north uh, all that that's going to matter is you know how close you are to the first alignment star when you do that the other thing that is kind of cool is that it does figure out if your you know tripod is off level and it kind of tries to compensate for that Guys, when you're setting up the scope, just make sure that your tripod's are already level. You don't have to worry about that. And I haven't said all that. Like, I mean, the GPS is kind of cool. It does make it quicker. Like, you don't have to punch in, like, the day and that type of deal. But I'll actually show you the way that I normally do when it starts to get dark. And, uh, you know, you guys will see how much quicker it is just to do this all manually and not worry about all these fancy gizmos. Alrighty guys, and while it's still getting dark, one other thing that I did want to show you uh, that's going to probably show up better during the daytime is how the focusing works. So basically in order to focus the scope uh, with the built-in focuser, you just hit the focus button. Uh, and then there's uh, four, I believe, focusing speeds on this. So, you know, once you hit that, uh, you just basically, you know, hit the arrow buttons and basically, as you could hopefully see, I'll get a little bit closer. So the whole secondary mirror is moving back and forward. Now, like I said, um, you know, this to me, like it works okay for like general focusing, uh, both on this scope uh, that I got, you know, it had an external focuser, which makes it, you know, much nicer for fine focusing. This is a two speed unit. Uh, my 16 inch version, the deforked, uh, version of this uh, actually has an electric focuser on the back as well that I could very finely fine focus. So now uh, focusing mechanism that's built in, um, you know, honestly, I'm not a real fan. Like, I don't really feel like you could, especially with this hand controller, uh, you know, get it like really well focused. Um, you know, you'd have to kind of like switch the focus speeds. Uh, you can set presets on there too, but you know, I'm honestly, I, I honestly personally prefer like a manual focus anyway, even if it's just the default, you know, SCT kind of focus knob, I still would honestly probably prefer that. Alrighty guys, it is getting dark. Some of the stars are already coming out. There's, yeah, it's Vega out there. Anyway, 
Uh, so let's see you know, how long it'll take me to uh, do the same procedure if I do this manually. Um, so stopwatch, you know, I'm basically, I guess I'll switch the scope on first. So I got the controller on, the scope on. <clears throat> so this is booting up. Just like last time. And, you know, while this is booting, uh, the, like I said, the only thing that you really got to do is point this to north. So for me, north is approximately this way and then you want the deck axis to be level basically so you know what i'm doing here is you know i've got it you know, approximately level there all right so the scope is booted up you know we're pointing in the right direction and i'm going to stop start the stopwatch Okay, so stopwatch started, so basically at this point what I'm going to do is just do everything manually. So instead of doing the automatic one, I'm going to do mode for the manual alignment. So it asked me daylight savings, yes. Um, let's hear time. So right now it is 9.54, so I believe that's 21.54. Oop. 21.54. Enter. Uh, date is, uh, let's see here, what's the date today? Okay, so it's uh, 16 and it is June. June and 2025. Enter. Okay, so for alignment type, we're not going to do the automatic. We're just going to do two star because that way I can select the two stars that I want that I know are visible above the horizon are not covered by anything. Okay, so enter. Okay, so now it tells me to put the scope, you know, in the position that I have it put in already. So I'm just going to press enter at this point. And then it's asking me to select the stars again. So the first star that I'm going to do is Vega. Very bright. Very visible. And then this way you can hear the motors and how loud they are on the scope. So fairly loud, I'll say. Okay, so I'm turning the tail right on now, and we're, you know, like as you can see, so let's see here. Can you still see Vega? Yeah, there it is. So we're pointing, you know, in approximately the right direction. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do speed, and then just do max speed, so that way I could point this kind of quicker. Okay, so fairly well focused or uh, centered in the teller. Oh man, I can't see nothing. You know why? Because my desk cover is still on. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull that sucker off. Put this uh, over here. And, okay. So Vega is kind of right in there, so I'm going to change the speed to 5. It's already in the eyepiece, pretty pretty close. Okay, so I've got it centered, so I'm pressing enter. And then, so for the second star, actually kind of conveniently, Arcturus is right on the other side, so I'm going to do that one, Arcturus. Okay. You know, while this is slowing, you know, just in case you're not familiar, you want your alignment stars to be fairly far apart from each other. They'll give you better accuracy. Alright, and I think our Taurus, yeah, it's that guy up there. So we're, you know, pointed pretty close to that. Yeah, so this one's a lot closer, so for speed I'll just do six. Kind of center it up in the tail rod. 
Okay, so it's in there. Um, speed, I'll do five again. Get it pretty close. Okay. Enter. All right, so alignment successful. So let's see where we are time-wise here. Okay, so four, so I'm right under five minutes and this is going very slow and I have to kind of pause really to check the date actually. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, like if I was not trying to film this and talk to you, I mean, I could do this, you know, like literally probably in, you know, like easily in three minutes. Alrighty guys, so check this out. Quick update for you. I am doing some EAA with my uh, mirror flip system and the ASI uh, 2600 MC Pro. Uh, we are got a stack going on M13 already. Um, you know, I've got a you know just kind of like a pretty eyeball rough focus on it. Uh, so far, we're at 90 seconds, but yeah. The mount is doing great as far as the track and these are, and you know, as far as the settings, so you can kind of see, I'm doing five second exposure, so you know, that's typically what I do for EA. I just kind of wanted to see, uh, you know, I'm actually kind of considering, uh, you know, keeping the scope as an EAA scope. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that you know, I do see as a downside for the way that I usually like to run this. Is as you can see, the stack is pretty long, right? And it's gonna hit the fork arm, you know, if you kind of slew a lot closer to Zenith. Although, you know, right now I'm I, I'm pointed probably I don't know, like uh, probably like 60 degrees or so. So, like, you know, it's you know decently close to Zenith is what you could get. I mean, obviously, if you're running a wedge. Which is what you'd really want to do for uh, EAA. That wouldn't be an issue. But anyhow, um, I'm just going to kind of have fun with the setup tonight, guys. Uh, I'll post in some more EAA examples from the night at the end of the video. So if you guys you know, want to check that out, stay tuned. But yeah, pretty cool. And the optics on the scope are, are, are awesome, I will say. Alrighty guys, so hopefully you enjoyed those couple of EAA pictures that I was able to take with the 12 inch uh, Meet RCX 400 and I wanted to leave you with this view of the 16 inch Meet RCX 400. So here's me standing uh, next to mine. Uh, this is the D fork model that I, you know, kind of mentioned earlier. Um, if you haven't watched my series on me restoring this thing, you know, check it out. I'm linking it up above right now. Overall, awesome, awesome scope. Uh, and then for my, you know, kind of like uh, viewers that, you know, view my channel regularly, if you're wondering why I haven't posted kind of a conclusion video about this guy, I am still working on it. I just wanted to give it a couple of months of me, you know, using the scope uh, under the, you know, nice sky to kind of give you guys my, you know, kind of concluding thoughts about my honest opinion about this scope. Getting back to the 12-incher though and just kind of summing it up, uh, awesome scope, you know, very advanced optics, you know, very advanced electronics. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.